Okay, my friends. Seeing that we have uh, an interest in tattooing, I'm going to tell you a story about tattooing. And after I'll show you how our ancestors did tattoos. Now, the oldest skin that we have that has tattoos is from Yahtzee, or the Iceman. Uh, it's a, a, a man who was shot in the back by an arrow and he died of exposure up in the Alps. His body froze and we have the mummy. The uh, mummy has several tattoos, basically small dots, but basically tattoos. And uh, so the oldest skin in the world, and it's the skin of a warrior, a man who had an ax, a man who had a bow and arrow, uh, but he had tattoos, okay? So the oldest skin we've ever found has tattoos. Now, Egyptian mummies have tattoos. A lot of them have tattoos. Uh, women have tattoos on the upper part of the breast. Uh, the Scythians had tattoos. They were a famous uh, tribe, uh, kind of like a Mongol type of tribe, uh, a Asian uh, uh, horseman. And uh, they had tattoos, and there's uh, one mummified body because they buried their chieftains up in the mountains where it froze. So they have a, a, a chieftain up there, and they also have a princess. And she has some beautiful lions scrolled around her shoulders, and uh, quite nice-looking tattoos actually on this on this mummy. Um, you know, when when Caesar came to fight with the the ancient Brits. Uh, he said that they were dressed in woad, you know. Well, woad is blue, and what they were really talking about is uh, the Britons came down to the shore with their swords and their balls hanging out, and they had their tattoos, and they fought off the Romans. Uh, uh, the first conquest wasn't that successful. They went home after a while, but they were dressed in woad. They had tattoos. The ancient Britons had tattoos. The ancient Vikings had tattoos. Uh, the Arabs say they did. And... Uh, uh, so, uh, you know, there's been a lot of tattooing. Uh, uh, mummies, uh, Indian mummies from the Andes uh, that are sort of freeze-dried, buried up in the mountains, uh, they had tattoos. Uh, Captain Cook brought tattooing back to Europe, to the ports. Uh, they had found uh, it in, in the Philippines and in, in, in uh, the Moray, and all these guys had their faces completely tattooed. I'm pretty sure you've seen the more, you know, they, and they do all this kind of uh, dancing. Pretty impressive guys, anyhow, especially when they got a big baseball bat in their hand. <laughs> anyhow, uh, that's what uh, uh, was going on. Now, also, uh, uh, in the past, there was a lot of tribal tattooing, uh, uh, that is, religious or tribal tattooing. Uh, uh, for instance, in, in around 700 AD, the Catholic Church passed the Edict of Westminster and it said that people could not get tattoos in Britain because they were getting the ancient uh, tattoos of Odin and Odin and uh, the boys, you know. And so through these uh, religious markings, the, uh, the Anglo-Saxons and the Vikings were passing on their ancient religion. Just like today, many people will get the cross. So people do get religious uh, motifs. And uh, so that's a, another interesting thing that uh, uh, happens. So um, um, that's the kind of thing, you know, you find it all through the Philippines. Basically, wherever people had skin, they did tattoos. Okay, so uh, 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 that's that part, and in a minute I'll uh, I'll tell you how how tattooing was discovered by our ancestors. Back in a minute. Okay, now so I'll tell you the story about how tattooing got invented. I was watching TV one day, and I saw some guys having a battle in about 1930 in Borneo and several things clicked into my mind and I realized how tattooing was invented. Now one thing we've all seen is a kid who had a, a little black dot on his face or on his arm where another kid took a pencil 
and stabbed them when it leaves a little tiny blue mark. I'm sure you've all seen that at some time on somebody. Well, that little stabbing and that with the charcoal or carbon is a tattoo, a little round tattoo. Just like uh, the kind that Yahtzee had, the little round tattoos. Anyhow, the uh, uh, battle that I saw in 1930 was uh, in Borneo, and there was like a, a two little hills that went on an angle down to a little river. Okay. So there was about 20 guys on this side and about 20 guys on this side and these guys would run down the hill and these guys would run back up the hill these guys would shoot arrows at them and then these guys would run down the hill and these guys would run up the hill and these guys would shoot arrows at them and then these guys would run down the hill and these guys would run up the hill and they'd shoot arrows and that's what they were doing. That's what our ancestors used to do all the time, squabble over territory. In this case, there was a little river that was a boundary between the two tribes. Anyhow, you know how when somebody throws a, a ball at a guy or, or something and, and, and he, he jumps up and turns around, you know, and you get hit in the back, right? Anyhow, this warrior had one of those barbed arrows stuck right in his buttock he must have seen the arrow coming when the guys ran down and shot. He jumped up to turn around and he got wonked in the back or in the rear end. Anyhow, the witch doctor was taking these barbs on this arrow and he would stick a stick in and push down and he could pull out one barb. He stuck the stick in and pushed down again and he got out another barb. I actually saw the witch doctor take this barbed arrow out of this guy's rear end. Anyhow, that's how guys fight back and forth. Now, let's uh, go back a little farther in time, past Borneo, to our ancestors. In the ancient world, before we used obsidian and stone to make our arrow points, we would just take a stick, put it in the fire, and when you let it burn and you turned it, it tapers to a point. You've all seen a stick that was burnt that's pointy. Well, if you're careful and point it or twist it just right, you can get a nice point on there, and that's what our ancestors used for spears. Okay? Now, that black carbon on the end of the spear is just like the black carbon on the end of the pencil, and it makes a black dot. Now, if we go back and we get our ancestors fighting and the one guy throws the spear and the other guy jumps up and turns around, gets stuck in his rear end, that will heal up like a black dot. What the young warrior saw were the older warriors. And the older warrior, maybe he's got a black dot there and maybe he's got a black dot there on his thigh or maybe on his rear end where he jumps and turns around but he's got a black dot for sure. Now, young guys are really scared. They don't want to fight. They don't want to get hurt. So, can you imagine the young warrior taking the stick and burning it and getting it sharp and just sort of going, oh, just to see what it was like to get stuck with a stick? That's a tattoo. Once our ancestors realized that the little stick, the little bit of carbon, if it was put into the skin, made a tattoo, they started doing it. Now listen, if you just cut yourself and rub some dirt into it, that'll make a tattoo. That'll make a mark. Would you do that? Would you deliberately just cut yourself and make a mark? You wouldn't. But if you wanted to be like the old warrior, you would. And that's how tattooing got invented. By seeing the warriors with their wounds healing up, leaving these patterns, 
wanting to be an instant old warrior. That's what young warriors want. They take that little stick and we start tattooing ourselves. That's how it all began. A long, long time ago in a far distant land. <laughs> Anyhow, I'll be back in a minute and show you some stuff. Okay now, my friends, so I'm going to show you some basic tattooing that is quite ancient, as ancient as the styles that our ancestors used. Now, when I was 18, I joined the Canadian Army, and after I was in the Army about a month, I was walking down the corridor in the barracks, and uh, there was a guy named Cantor from Nova Scotia, and he was sitting there on the barrack box, and he was doing a tattoo. I saw, looked in the room, you know, I saw these guys doing something, I looked in. Anyhow, Cantor had taken some regular ink, writing ink, and uh, we used to get a sewing kit in the Army, so he had taken some sewing needles and uh, had sew tied them together with a little piece of string, and uh, he was doing a tattoo. And I got a little name put on my arm, uh, Gary, of course. Uh, um, you don't have much imagination when you're young. And uh, I got that covered up eventually. But, but anyhow, this is the kind of needle, you know. You see how I've taken a little bit of thread and I've just tied it around the end of the needle? Now that will act like a reservoir and pick up ink. Also, you notice that in this case, I've simply taken a, a needle bar and I've taken a pair of pliers and I bent it and that made a little handle. So I didn't need a handle, I could just make one like that. But it's a lot better if you can use a little handle like this. It's a, a lot easier to grip. And um, basically what you would do is take a sterilized needle and uh, open it up. And then we can take a pair of pliers and cut it to any length that we want. So I'm going to cut it right about here. Now I can put that in my little pin vise. And now I have a nice little grip. So that's a, a five round. Here we have a... Uh, a nine round, a three round, a seven round. Here we have a seven flat or magnum. It's actually a magnum, not a flat. Here's a, uh, a nine. Okay. And these will make different kinds of lines. So again, we can just take a little bit of thread put it around to act as a reservoir, but you'll see that we don't really have to do that. We can take a little bit of Vaseline. And now, remember, we have to wash and shave the spot. We don't use a piece of plastic that's been, hasn't been sterilized. In this case, I am because we're not doing a tattoo and I'm just showing you stuff, but we use a separate ink. We wash our hands. We put on our rubber gloves. We make sure that whatever touches one person never touches another. We use separate tattoo ink. We uh, use a sterilized needle. There's no reason to not. Though, of course, you can make your own needles. Even out of sewing needles, it's possible. But I would suggest that you use a separate cap, uh, get a little handle, and use that in, in the kit, and you'll find that it works. And, of course, you really need to 
shake that ink okay now you always have to lay out a tattoo you never just start you know writing Gary because it'll get all crooked you know so if you're going to do anything uh, uh, you're going to lay it out now in this case we've just made a line and uh, we have little uh, tattooing ink uh, pens in the kit so you can use that but I've never really seen you know somebody using a regular ballpoint pen have any problems to tell you the truth now this is a five round and I just want to let you see something now I hold it down on a very low angle and I've made a little line so I have something to follow I'm not just putting it any place and I if you see my fingers here if that was actually uh, skin I would be spreading the skin stretching it and I'm keeping it on a very low angle doing it by hand is quite uh, a slow procedure but you can see that the first pass starts to make a line and then we can just simply go over that again Uh, one thing about tattooing, it takes a lot of patience. You'll never very or never really go fast with it. Okay, but when you do that, you see that you start to get a line. Now, I'm going to show you a little bit more. We'll get a little bit closer, but we're going to uh, do our shading, our coloring with these you'll get an idea and then you'll be able to do it the uh, cavemen they uh, they had uh, uh, obsidian I guess you would call them knives that they couldn't make incisions they had uh, ochre uh, in bowls sometimes archaeologists think that they may have been doing tattooing This is a, a, a seven round. Again, we have to keep it down on a very low angle when we're doing this style. If you hold it straight up and down, well, all you'll get is a series of little dots. But if you hold it down on an angle, it will start to go in. Okay, so those are the, the different things that you can do. Now, of course, if you take a magnum, a shading needle, and put in, you can start to get, and we keep it down on a nice low angle. So it's just a matter of work, looking at it, being careful where you place it, and you'll see that you can start to get go from a, a, a dark line, and you can start to get a nice even shade. And as you go out, if you go faster, you'll be able to get a relatively nice shade okay uh, so that's basically how we can do a tattoo okay 
Okay, now, so I'm going to uh, show you how uh, easy it is to do a tattoo in a traditional way. Uh, we're going to just take a couple of needles and uh, get them ready to be put in the grip. The uh, When Captain Cook was sailing around the Pacific, they discovered that the natives were doing tattoos and they came up with hearing the word of uh, ta-ta, kind of, uh, I think that's how they said it. And of course, the uh, uh, from that word ta-ta came uh, the word tattoo. I'm just going to take that three round and... Get rid of that little grip. That way I can use it this way. But uh, when the uh, when the English sailors discovered tata, what it was was the uh, the natives were taking something like uh, something like a rake, uh, almost the shape of an an Allen key here, only they'd have a shark's tooth down here or a bamboo shoot or something uh, like a, a stone or something sharp. And they may have several of these little points in the same spot, but it was like this kind of a shape. And they took a stick and they put it on the person's uh, skin and they went and they moved it along as they went. And that's where they got the sound ta-ta, tattoo, 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 tattoo. Okay, so that's where the uh, English sailors got the word of tattooing. Anyhow, what we've done here now is taken a, a, a few needles and we're just going to uh, move them out of the way and I'll explain what we're doing. Now, we can take a, a, uh, a pen or a surgical pen or a pen. Again, we've shaved the spot, washed the spot, removed the hair, wearing rubber gloves separate ink, separate caps, a new sterilized needle, and uh, let's say we were going to uh, uh, make something like, you know, something like a heart. Okay? Okay. So, what we would do now is take our ink and our needle, and we would start to hold it down on a very low angle, and this is a three round, so it's going to make a very light line. And again, it takes a lot of patience. And I'm pushing in the direction that I'm going. This little handle makes it very easy. And I would be stretching that skin with my two fingers. And this will give you an idea. You see how that little bit of thread holds that ink. Each one of these little pokes that's what it's called, stick and poke. Makes a little mark. And it starts to become a little tattoo, okay? Now that's one pass and, uh, you know, it's, it's fairly light. Now, really, I would say that something like a uh, a five round would make a little nicer line. Okay. And this time I'm not going to use any thread, but you'll see And we use the line we've already made to help us here. And 
narrow line starts to develop. Now this this is a, a five shader and you'll notice that when I use the five shader because the shader is uh, uh, not soldered up quite as far it spreads a little easier and it will actually make a, a, a great line I'll go this way so you can see it so I would be just stretching the skin this is very much the way the Japanese would do it just a long stick and needle and uh, pushing it in. Often the Japanese will stick it in and they'll pluck it up a little bit too just to open up the, uh, the wound a, a, a slight amount. And they will often take a brush and just poke the holes first and then use the brush. Anyhow, as you can see, as soon as we started using the five shader, we got a much stronger line. Okay, so that's what you want to do. It's just look at it very carefully. It's hand poking. Make sure that it's all nice and even. The more time you put into it, the more even it gets. So, anyhow, a tattoo starts to appear. Now you can easily take uh, shading needles. Like this is a a uh, this is a five magnum and if I wanted to sh shade this a little bit just to give it a little relief I could just darken in the uh, the tip a little bit let's say and we could start to give it a little bit of form just by shading a little bit and this is about the most simple kind of thing that you're ever going to do but I think you'll get an idea of what's going on Okay, so you notice how, if you can, you see how the form is starting to take shape. So basically, we're just perforating, okay, perforating the skin. Now we've got a little bit of shadow in there. Okay, now what we can do is take a, a, a little bit of uh, a little bit of red and if you take a cap and uh, put a little Vaseline on the bottom it, it will just stay there. Again, this is the simplest kind of tattoo uh, that you can do. Now, in this case, I guess we'll just take our, our 9 Magnum. Again, all these needles would be new, sterilized. These are just me showing you how to do stuff. Okay, so... Keep it down at a low angle when you're doing it by hand. 
Let it overlap as much as possible. Again, in this case, I have not put any thread around it, you'll see, but again, you can do that. But in this case, you know, there's enough ink being splashed on there that uh, it doesn't have to, uh, the volume of ink does not have to be increased, you know. There's plenty of it there. Just make sure you shake it up good. Okay, so this is starting to starting to look like a little heart. Now, the thing is that you could uh, do the most complicated kind of tattoos. Also, you know, uh, uh, this is a, a very simple little kind of thing that you would see, but uh, uh, using these. Simple little grips, sterilized needles. It's very simple. Just keep it clean. You know, don't, uh, again, uh, tattoo more than one person with your needles or anything like that. And you could do a portrait. You could do an eagle. You could do a great big back piece. Uh, it just takes time. But you can see that in a few minutes we've got started. You know, so you can have a lot of fun doing this kind of thing. And uh, this is basically how our ancestors did it. You know, uh, uh, again, around the 700 AD, they had the, West, the Edict of Westminster. They banned all tattooing. Uh, you know, they, uh, in England, they said that uh, it was passing on the pagan designs and they didn't want it. Uh, so they try to suppress tattooing along with the ancient religions and things like that. But, you know, today people still like religious tattoos. In other words, they still get crosses. And, uh, and, and then the skulls, of course, have a, a kind of a magical meaning. But, you know, they get crosses. So uh, it, it's just the way uh, people are. Uh, the shaman used to do it, you know, uh, they had magic symbols. That, it was called totemism. And if you got... Uh, a certain animal tattooed on you well you've got the qualities of that animal you know the the hawk could see good you know the bear was strong uh the wolf you know could run and chase animals uh, uh all these kinds of, of things so uh it has a long history but uh basically if you do this simple procedure the way i was just showing you you can have a lot of fun and get started it's not very expensive and that's about it. So anyhow, have fun, and I'll talk to you later. Bye now.